I'm selling things that don't exist. You believe there are seven core principles to pitching? Yeah. And uh, I like to use the word principle instead of rules because uh, truth is like, I mean, you can see in the past like 15 years, uh, in the past three years in, in terms of how things have worked, uh, just how things, technology, interactions, the way we engage with content, that changes all the time. Uh, but the core principles behind how things function, those never change. So I like to work with principles, yeah. But I, I, I've identified seven that I think are just sort of true and consistent, the same today as they were back in Shakespeare's time period of, of how do you pitch a story idea and get the thing rolling. Well, it looks like the first one is selling. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think sales has a really negative word or connotation, I should say, to it. But um, you have to sell yourself if you want to pitch your idea. Um, we talked about it before. You can, you can write a great script, but if it just sits on your desktop, uh, on your laptop, like no one's going to see it. You need to be able to pitch yourself. You need to be able to pitch why it's worth reading. You need to get it to the right people. Not get it to everybody, not do a mass email, but um, find the right people, the right companies that would resonate with it and sell yourself and sell your idea. Number two, pitching is listening? Pitching is listening, yes. Um, I, most of my pitch meetings, because I pitch too, you know, I'm, I'm pitching business to business. So I'm pitching a business opportunity of how can we get a film made? How can we get a TV series made? In order for me to get that order out of the client, I need to listen to what they want. They need to tell me, um, either they need to tell me or I need to do the research and find out what is it that they need? What are they looking for? What is their company on the hunt for? And I have to showcase why we're the best ones to deliver it. And if you're pitching your ideas, uh, your stack of, of, of 100 pages of script, like that doesn't change in the middle of that meeting, but how you talk about it can. So if um, you're dealing with a client and they start presenting or discussing or describing content in a specific way, listening to that, listening to how they talk about content, listening to what it is that they really need is your way to uh, transition uh, a meeting into an opportunity for yourself. So yeah, it's, people will tell you exactly what they need. They'll tell you exactly what they want and there's no shortage of information out there in terms of being able to at least get a pretty solid idea of how to position yourself. What if they're so nervous that they can't listen because they're so worried about will this turn out, do they like my work, whatever it is? Look, it's, it's, it can be nerve wracking in a sense. Look, I would say this actually. It can be nerve wracking when you're not used to it um, it can be nerve wracking when you have built this idea of what pitching must be like versus how it actually is. Um, I think most people envision, uh, you know, an entourage, scary boardroom situation of, you know, six, seven, eight expensive suit people staring at you with like cold faces and, um, I'm not saying I haven't had that experience, but like for the most part, pitching is actually pretty easy going. You're meeting somebody over coffee. You're having just a, a quick chat over a Zoom or you know a, a Google meeting, um, phone call. That's how most pitching is actually done. Most pitching is done by email. And if you are uncomfortable, um, you can take as much time as you need to craft a good email. Uh, and if you can target it well and you don't write it too long, you know, you can actually sort of pitch quite well that way. But you always want to make it more that, look, I'm starting this idea, but I'm really here to work for you. What do you need as a company? Because I can deliver it. And that's sort of the opportunity to get that feedback loop of we need XYZ and uh, we need writers who can work in this capacity. And excuse me, how long is too long? For an email? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they've actually done studies on this. I'm sure there's some analysis somewhere. Um, but, and I think there's actually like studies about how long you should, I think it's like 27 characters for a subject line so it can be read entirely on an iPhone. Uh, but anyway, that's a whole long-winded way. No, that's fascinating. I, I would say like four paragraphs of like two sentences each is like the max for an email. And it's got to sort of be 
you're presenting everything you got, you know, the, the five W's, who, what, where, when, why. It's you're saying, this is who I am, this is the script I have, and you gotta make it as easy for your client as possible. When I'm pitching movies, they're finished movies, but when I'm pitching movies um, to buyers internationally or here in the States, like I make it as easy for them as possible because they're busy. And it's not that they're rude, it's not that they're, you know, it's just that they're busy. So the easier I can make it, the better. Um, you're presenting yourself. You know, you want to talk about yourself. It's not, don't just dive in with screenplay is X, Y, Z, da, 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 This is the concept. It's much more like, you know, you've showcased that you've actually like done your research and that you're presenting yourself. And by the way, you have this script too. And you'd like to start a conversation about writing. You know, it's, it's not like buy this script right now. It's much more, I, I, I'm a writer. I'm trying to look for uh, opportunities. What you're writing, I'm sorry, what you're producing is very much in sync with what I'm writing. I have a couple of log lines. I'd love to share them with you if, uh, uh, you know, we can chat sometime. It's, it's very casual. Number three, presentation matters. Absolutely. Um, most of the deals I have secured, it's uh, what I do in the industry. I'm selling things that don't exist. I'm going into uh, a television network or working with a VOD platform, and I am selling, as I said, a lot of the deals I do, the contract is literally like title to be determined. We have no idea what the movie is. We're selling that we're going to make a movie. And sometimes it'll be like to be determined Christmas movie or to be determined thriller, but we don't know what the movie is. Um, so in order to get that, I have to present in the best possible manner uh, what it is that I'm going to deliver upon. Um, so if you are doing that, so I mean, I'll, I'll create like really nice pitch decks. I'll spend a lot of time on them. Um, I'll, I'll source images from places like Canva or Pexel or other, or other spots, and they have these amazing resources of photos you can use, and you can build presentations. Our whole industry, and I think in a visual-minded sense, a, a lot of those on the creative side in our industry are very visual thinking, so being able to express their ideas in a visual way I think is important. Uh, and they also get to do that if they're doing like a personal branding website. But that's sort of the thing I guess I'm talking about is if, if, an, if a name pops up uh, in an email, um, in somebody's email box, like before you hit reply, you're going to like Google them. Is this person legit? Is this spam? Is this, this, is this, that? And, um, looking if they have a website, if they, if they don't have credits, that's okay. Uh, but it, it's like, if they have a website and you can see like, this is a real person and they seem to be very professional and they seem to sort of like be reasonable and how they're functioning in terms of what their expectations are. Yeah, you will probably reach out. You don't want to lose an opportunity. Um, and presentation matters in the sense of how you dress. How do you present yourself? How, what is your etiquette when you're on the phone or, or via email? Are you clear and do you, do you express yourself clearly? Or are you one of these people who just like has really choppy, vague emails and people aren't really sure what to make of them? Um, do you overextend the opportunity and, and reach too far, too quickly? Um, it's, it's those are kinds of the things about presentation matters. But I think website, visual, what can you do? There's a lot of that is in your own control too. And I think that's actually something that's good. I'm just curious, what would an example be of overextending? Oh, like, like 9,000 emails a day or, you know, way too many text messages. I mean, I have people who like send me like 15 text messages in a row. Like it's like my phone just vibrates for a good like 12 seconds and I know who it is. You know, it's, uh, it's people like that. That's a little bit overreaching. Too many phone calls. But the occasional like check in is totally fine and you should check in and, and like keep up on things but um you know it's it's i think basic etiquette understanding so maybe the understanding realizing that you're not the only person they're working with i know it's hard when it comes to your personal matter or project but realizing this person might be dealing with a hundred emails that day yeah it's it's for sure and look i mean 100 is a good day. Like I, I get way more than that. And um, you can't read them all. You can't read them all. So you do have to like make decisions of like, what am I going to actually focus on today? And getting to some of those kinds of emails that are more like the blind cold call, cold email kind of things. It is at the bottom of the list, but it does get addressed. And so that's why it's so important. Like if you've got that much time and that much attention from somebody, 
you got to make sure you're, you're getting everything right. That's presentation, that you've done your research, that you're presenting stuff that actually resonates, you know, and it's, it's, that's sort of where all that falls into. And yeah, I think it's, it's really critical to remember that when you're reaching out to, and I, I remind myself of this too, because like, it'll go weeks and I won't hear back from clients. And, um, you know, you sort of do question like, you know, what, what went wrong? And the truth is they're busy. They're really busy they, and they have personal lives. I have a personal life, I have a family. You know, it's, it's, um, that does eat into the equation too in terms of time. Number four, pitching is re-pitching? Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's not like you pitch once and then everything just falls into place. It's, um, you will pitch your idea at log line stage. And if you're fortunate enough to get um, a writer for hire agreement, you'll re-pitch the ideas you put in the treatment. You'll have to re-pitch at script, at script stage. You'll have to, once the script is acquired, I have to go pitch people. I have to go pitch people to get the project funded. We have to go pitch it to talent and, and explain to them why they would want to be in this film. You would think that, you know, actors would be jumping up and down to be in movies, but it's like, um, sometimes they are so busy with projects, you also have to pitch like, look, if you can only do seven films this year, this should be one of them and here's why. And it's, it's a constant thing. When we're marketing our films, that's a pitch. A, a trailer of a movie is a pitch. It's pitching you saying, you only have so much time this evening to watch a television show or a movie. Make it ours. Pluto TV, uh, Tubi TV, Netflix, they're pitching you too. And they're saying, if you only are gonna watch content on one platform tonight, Make it us. That, it, that, that's the whole process of repitching. It's, it's not like you do it once and it's done. If you take a film like Chinatown, which just for some reason is just constantly said is like the best script ever written. And it's like, that's not actually what it was when they filmed the movie. That's what it ended up being in the end. Um, but you know, at, at script stage, that had to get, you know, that had to go through a lot of layers before it finally turned out the other side at the end the way it did. And a lot of that also happened on set, in the editing room, and just, you know, uh, 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 concessions they had to make in post and all that. So it's, it's that sort of the thinking, is that a script is never done until the movie is released. That's sort of my view of it. Number five, pitching is a slow process? Yes, it's a very slow process. It does not happen overnight. I'm, I'm talking to clients. It's right now, it's March 2023 when we're filming this. I'm pitching clients, you know, uh, uh, 18 months in advance in the sense of I'm trying to, to guarantee slates that are next year or even early 2025. Um, it's, it's a slow process in the sense of you may have to pitch a client and then repitch them and then repitch them and then repitch them market after market, quarter after quarter. I try to get um, usually quarterly calls or like, you know, six month calls with some of my key clients just to keep them up to speed of what we're doing and what we can bring to the table. Um, and yeah, we, we are constantly representing sometimes the same stuff in those meetings. Uh, I would say on average, like to get a movie, like a low budget movie, anything under two and a half million, um, that can be, kind of quick, you could do that maybe in six months, like concept to green light. But if you're talking television, like a whole series, that's at least an 18 month process, if not two years. And that's planting the seed of the idea. And then like, this is why I always focus so much on principles over trends, because there are trends, there are things that are like super popular today. And then you'll get a flood of emails from writers who like, I stayed up all night and wrote this movie because this is like the hot new thing. And it's like, it's gonna take like six months to get this funded, shot, delivered, released. Uh, by that time, that trend is gone. Nobody cares about it anymore. So it's, it's TV shows that come out and they're extremely like relevant or everyone's talking about it. They were just really good quality programs, but they were being developed, you know, 18 months, two years uh, uh, beforehand. I mean, Queen's Gambit is like the best example. I don't know the exact dates of that one, but I wanna say it was like the 90s, the early, like they started, they greenlit, I'm sorry, they acquired the book rights before the lead actress was even born. Like that's how long that was in that development hell process. It's a very slow process. And the truth is you gotta keep a lot of pots boiling at once on the back burner. You know, if I'm dealing with a client and they need six films this year, 
I may have 18 to 20 projects we're keeping warm because we don't know exactly which one they're going to go with. And then they pick them very quick. And then all of a sudden you're off to the races. But yeah, that, that process in between can be a very long drawn out time period. Number six, pitching is a lot like dating. Yes, this is, this is a, I adamantly believe that business in general is a lot like dating. It's, um, you use the exact same protocols. You are putting yourself out there. You have kind of a, a clear understanding of what you're trying to achieve, and there's no exact one way to get from beginning to end, so to speak. Um, you do have to, presentation matters, you do have to sort of pitch and present who you are. You have to sort of showcase why you're worth dating. Uh, you have to bring all that to the table. You have to be willing to go out and accept that some people are gonna say no, and they were gonna say no no matter what you said. Uh, you're just not compatible, the chemistry isn't right. And then the whole process of how do you communicate? Um, you know, you don't wanna over communicate. You don't wanna write too many crazy emails. You don't wanna text too much. You don't wanna call inappropriate numbers of times or leave 50 voicemails. All of those little sort of nuances I think are just true of human behavior in general. You, there's sort of an, a social understanding of this is an acceptable mode of how we're communicating. Uh, and then there's kind of a, a, a totally unwritten line that you sort of instinctually know you shouldn't cross, but unfortunately a few people do. And uh, uh, that's sort of where that all comes from. So if we took that analogy and said, well, okay, don't talk about your ex on the first date for like over an hour, what would be the same thing for a writer? Maybe don't talk about deals that fell through and trash a studio, or what would be the same type of thing, because that's an equal turnoff, you know? Yeah, I, I would say just in general, don't shit talk anybody. Like, and, and like just, I'm not even gonna say like, it's okay if like the other person brings it up. Like, just don't. Don't be that person. Um, be professional. It's okay that you have a script that, you know, was with another client and maybe they optioned it and then nothing happened with it. That happens and that does not make it like a tarnished property. Um, you can, you can speak openly, but you don't have to like, you know, you don't want to trash talk people and, and fall into that game. Uh, that just because the, the, the question always then ends up being like, well, if things don't work out with us, what are you going to say about us behind our backs? You know? So it's like, it kind of makes people kind of want to say, I don't know if I really want to bring this writer in because, uh, they, what are they going to say if like, if, if, a, if they write a script for us and we pay them and then like all of a sudden the, the network says no to the project and they get the rights to the script back, they've been paid, but um, you know, these things happen. And so, yeah, if you have writers who sort of like, you know, trash talk people, that does happen. Um, so it's those kinds of things. It's just, again, it's like, it's, it's basic social skills, basic etiquette. Number seven, relationships are everything. Yes, relationships um, really fuel the business. Uh, and that's, I think, the most challenging at first. It feels the most challenging, I would say, if you're new to the industry, um, regardless of what age you are. It's, it's just, uh, if you're new to the industry, it feels like you know nobody. And I would say, like, during the pandemic, this was so powerfully understood because those of us who've been in the industry long enough, you know, 10 years, 15 years, who have real clients that we know and can reach out to, we were fine during the pandemic. We could communicate, we should just reach out and shoot an email or, or a call and it was fine. But if you didn't have those connections, that was such a tough time period and it really kind of created this big gap. Um, and I, I know a lot of younger people who are kind of maybe a year or two behind where they could be because of the pandemic. But um, where do you meet connections and how do you build them? Truth is, you just start. You, don't, you just start one at a time. And it's okay to talk to people and meet with people who don't seem to have anything to do with what you do. And in truth, that's where you're gonna find your best contacts. Like if you are a writer, it's great to work with other writers and talk to other writers, but at a certain point, like you also need to meet people on the other side of the fence who are more on the business side um, and learn what they do and learn how they function in their system so that you can sort of find those opportunities. But uh, it's just a slow process. It's, it's not gonna happen overnight. And it's something you just sort of have to make a habit. You have to make a habit of 
talking to other people. You have to make a habit of communicating well, presenting yourself well all the time. Uh, and it goes back to the whole pitching is like dating. It's like, if you are single, you know, those opportunities can pop up at any time. So you sort of have to always be ready for them, I guess, in a sense. But yeah, it's, it's you need to be able to consistently and regularly be open to the idea of communicating with people who are in the industry, learn what they do, find out how it works in the system. And if you just kind of keep that process going and you stay in relatively reasonable communication with everybody, um, over time you'll start to find dots to connect. I know that person and they are at that company and I can reach out to them now. And maybe when you first met that wasn't the case, but you know, 12 months down the line, they got a job opportunity and now it's an in for you. That's how it works. And then once you do work together uh, and you've gotten a job or two in whatever capacity in the industry, you just do the best work you can. And truth is like your reputation does hold. And it's the little things that <clears throat> give people a sense of who you really are. So you gotta give it your all. Do you feel like writers expect things to happen more rapidly as the world has gotten so fast and everything's instantaneous? Have you noticed that or no? That's Yes, uh, I think in general, uh, it's, it's a sense that people have that like things just happen way quicker than they really do. Um, you know, that if you, if you send a script that it's gonna be read that day or the next day, it's like, you know, it may take a month to get it read. Uh, if, if there is a deal to be done, um, that it's gonna happen in a week, and it's like, no, it can take two, three months to negotiate a deal. Uh, so it, it, it just draws out a lot longer on the actual real world professional side, and so that will ripple into buying cycles and scripts. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's being realistic about time expectations is very critical to anyone starting out in the industry, in whatever capacity.